there's too much debate about what's the difference between vision and mission, right? There's no standardized definitions of these things. Some people have one of them, some people have both of them. Nobody is sure which one goes first. Uh, and I'm not willing to step into that debate. I think it's silly. Um, and so I, I, I believe in the just cause, which is this affirmative statement of a future state that does not yet exist that I will commit my business to help build, right? You can call it vision if you want, but I like the term just cause because it holds a higher standard. It's a cause so just that I would be willing to sacrifice for it. Sacrifice could mean um, turning down a client. That's free money. It could, because they don't believe what I believe. Sacrifice could mean spending time away from my family. It could mean taking business trips. It could mean turning down a job somewhere else that could pay me more money because I want to do this. I believe in this. Um, and if any of you have vision statements for your businesses, if you have a just cause, a cause, a cause so just that your people would sacrifice for it, I have a test. It's a very simple test of three things that if you can pass all these three things, you have a vision, you have a just cause worthy of playing in the infinite game, right? So I'll run through them quickly, then I'll explain them. Your vision, your just cause must be um, resilient, it must be inclusive, and it must be service-oriented. Okay, so resilient means that your vision, your just cause can withstand cultural, political, or technological change, right? Which means when I hear people say, to be the best technology, yeah. well, that's not gonna sustain through technological change. Think about how many businesses went like this simply because the internet was invented, right? So it has to, your, your cause has to be written in terms that is durable, that is, is, is resilient through technological, political, and, uh, and, and cultural change. That's number one. Number two, it has to be inclusive which means it's the very words that you choose are an invitation to those who believe what you believe, mm. whether they're internal or external, right? Uh, they're an invitation to anyone who wants to contribute to what you believe. So for example, if you talk about um, uh, to build the best travel website, let's just say, right? Um, that means the only people who would want to volunteer to be a part of it are people who build travel websites, or people who build websites. That means if you're an accountant, if you're somebody in back office, if you're somewhere in the support, you've literally made me feel like a second class citizen in my own company, right? So it has to be written in terms that anybody, no matter what job they play, feels like they could contribute directly to that cause. So it has to be inclusive. And the, th the third one is my favorite one, is it has to be service oriented. In all relationships, there's always a benefactor and a contributor, a contributor and a benefactor. So if I go to my boss for advice, uh, career advice, I expect that her advice to me will, be, will benefit me, right? I want to be the benefactor of that contribution. If they're giving me advice, if she only gives me advice that benefits her career, right. well, that means the primary benefit of her advice was her, not me. So service orientation means that the primary benefit goes to those other than the contributor. So if you're the leader, that means the primary benefit of leadership has to go to those other than the leader themselves. You cannot make decisions to enrich yourself. You have to make decisions to help those uh, that you lead. Now, you absolutely can make money, you can absolutely have ambition, those things are fine, but not as the primary benefit, right? A salesperson cannot make a sale simply to drive their own bonus. They have to make the sale to help the person get what they're trying to buy. The primary benefit. If you're an investor, the primary benefit of your investment, the primary benefit of your investment has to go to someone other than yourself, i.e. the company you're investing in. And if you're the company, the primary benefit of one of your company's sales, the primary benefit has to go to those other than the contributor, which is yourself, means it has to go to the customer, it has to go to the client. That's, so your, your vision statement needs to pass all those tests.